For those of you that aren't familiar with the term ecclesia, when Jesus said, I will build my church, he used the word not for sanctuary, not for gathering people, not for a synagogue, but he said, I will build my church, my ecclesia, and the very gates of hell will not be able to prevail against my church. As a matter of fact, he went on to say, and I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom, that whatever you bind is bound, whatever you loose is loosed, whatever you forbid is forbidden, whatever you allow is allowed. The ecclesia in the days of Rome, they knew exactly what this force was. Because number one, the Greeks used the term ecclesia as a legislative body. They were, the word ecclesia means called out once. How many of you are glad that you're called out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's son? Amen. Come on, we're, we're citizens of a different kingdom, right? We're called out once, called out of darkness into light. But in the Greek culture, the ecclesia there were those that were called out of the general population to form a legislative body. They became the Greek Senate. The ecclesia was the Senate. They were positioned, called out, and now positioned to govern and rule and to extend the government of Greece in the land. They set laws, they set rules, and they legislated. Don't you think it's interesting that Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia, my legislative body. Are you getting it that it's not just a matter of you getting your little heart healed? I hope you get your little heart healed so that you can rule and reign with Christ. Amen? We have people that will help you get your little heart healed. But we've got to understand that our highest calling is to rule and reign with Jesus. Amen? And so when Rome came along, they conquered Greece. And the Romans used ecclesia in a different way. They used it as a specialized military task force. These were those that were called out of the general military population to form this task force. And the, and the job of the Roman ecclesia, during, which is the, the, the time period that Jesus came along, the, the job of the Roman ecclesia was to go into all the newly conquered Roman territories. And their job was make this new territory look exactly like Rome. Enforce Roman law, build Roman roads, build Roman buildings. In other words, their job was replicate Rome in this new territory. So think about this. Jesus said, I will build my ecclesia, a military force, and your job is push back evil. Your job is to represent the kingdom of heaven Literally when it says, on earth as it is in heaven, I got this from Pastor Dean's book, uh, Apostolic Kingdom Praise, that phrase, when we pray on earth as it is in heaven, it literally means we superimpose heaven on earth. In other words, our job as the ecclesia is to make this earth look like heaven. To make America look like heaven. Come on, to make Santa Rosa Beach look like heaven. Do we need to raise our vision? Do we need to raise our expectation? Do we need to reorient ourselves to understand what it is that we're called to do? We're the ecclesia. And we're called to push back evil. To push back darkness. So here's what happened next. A large angel stood by with a megaphone and would shout, hold the line. He would shout, hold the line. And the ecclesia would march forward with two thundering steps. They were advancing, though every kind of evil was swirling around them. As they marched, they released a sound of war, and light came out of their mouths, blinding the enemy. We had you do that a couple weeks ago, where we marched and we made, hua. Y'all do that with me. One, two, three. Y'all do it better than me. I sound like a girl, okay? <laughs> it says, as they marched, they released a sound of war. We'll try it again. One, two, three. And light came out of their mouths, blinding the enemy. Hold the line, rang out again and again, and the ecclesia pushed back the evil. The gates of hell would not prevail. They would not be stronger than God's church. Now, the interesting thing is that the sound the boots made resonated in the heavens. And I realized the armies of heaven were marching with the ecclesia. 
Come on, this is the dance of the Mahanaim that we talked about earlier this year where heaven's armies are marching with us. And it's like the four lepers in the days of Elisha where the, the gates of Samaria were all shut up and there were four lepers. Y'all know what lepers are? They have that horrible skin disease where fingers fall off and noses fall off and ears fall off and it's, it's a horrible, horrible disease. And these four lepers were sitting by the gate of the city and they were starving to death. If it wasn't bad enough that they had leprosy, now they're starving to death. And suddenly they said, why sit we here till we die? Are we just going to sit here and die? They said, listen, if we, we can't get into the city, and besides, no, there's no food there. If we just stay here, we're going to die. Let's go to the enemy's camp. Maybe they'll kill us, but maybe they'll feed us first. Why sit we here till we die? What have we got to lose? And church, I'm telling you, we are at a what have we got to lose moment right now. We're going to pray harder. We're going to prophesy more accurately. We're going to make decrees. We're going to hold the line. Come on. That's right. And so they marched into the enemy's camp. And by the time they got there, they were all gone. They were gone. They'd abandoned all the food. They'd ab abandoned all their war spoils. They'd abandoned all the clothes, all, the, all, the, all the, the tents, everything. They'd abandoned it. Why? Because the second those four lepers got up and started marching, ears falling off, nose falling off. I mean, these are not like your, your picture of the great mighty army. There's some places in the body of Christ that probably look like those four lepers. But I'm telling you, when they made a decision not to just sit there and die, God caused all of heaven to march with them. And God caused the enemy to hear the sound of the resounding foot, footsteps and the chariots and the horses. And it sounded like an army coming down on their camp. And they, in confusion, left everything. And those four lepers ate until they were full. And they went back and broke the siege off the city. How many would have ever thought four lepers could have broken the siege off of a city? But you know what? You know what it took? It took somebody saying, enough is enough. It took somebody saying, what have we got to lose? It took somebody saying, I'm not just going to sit here and die. I'm going to engage. I'm going to hold the line. Amen. And so, it, so here's what happened. It says, this sound caused the demons to scream in agony. This was my dream. Welcome to my dream life, okay? This sound caused the demons to scream in agony and panic as they realized they were not just dealing with man or the church or the army here on earth, but they were also being confronted with the armies in heaven. Two armies advancing. One on earth, one in heaven. That's what Maha Naim means. Two armies. Two armies bringing God's kingdom into the land. And so if you don't mind just standing up for just a minute, because I want to charge you right now. Because you see, the Lord is saying to the people of God, don't be afraid of the night. Don't be afraid of the night. I heard the Lord say, tell my people, do not be afraid of the night. What is the night? The night is when things get dark. Okay, this is not a doom and gloom message. This is a victory message. And the Lord is saying, don't be afraid of the night because I own the night. I own the night. Listen to what the Lord said. He said, night only coaxes wickedness out of their hiding places. So when the light is turned on, there will be no place to run. For you're living in the manifestation of Isaiah 60, where it will seem darkness is covering the earth and deep darkness is covering people. But the Lord is rising on you, Ecclesia. And his glory is going to be seen on you. Then nations, even this nation, is going to come to your light. And kings to the brightness of your rising. And if you'll just lift your hands up, the Lord is declaring to his ecclesia that you may feel like you're living in a day where evil has prevailed. However, I say it to, unto you, the Lord says, I am up to something. 
I am up to something. And I'm breaking you free of fear. And I'm breaking you free of confusion. And I'm breaking you free of any place that would cause you to try to step back off the line. And I'm filling you full of boldness and courage and calling you to the front of the line. The Lord says, did I not say that I would cause evil and corruption to be exposed? Did I not say there would be days of chaos and confusion ahead? Even back in August, the Lord said that. He said, did I not say that I would expose the hidden plans and demonic schemes of the enemy? The Lord says, did you think it was going to be easy? Easy? Did you think it was going to look peaceful? <laughs> Do I need to remind you that the greatest victories come after the greatest battles? Why do nations rage and the people plot a vain thing? God sits in the heavens and laughs. The Lord says, I assure you I have a plan for America. I assure you I have heard your prayers. I assure you that I'm a God of righteousness and justice and I will have my way. The Lord says, you are at the Red Sea and Pharaoh's armies are pursuing you. They are pressing down on you. You feel trapped and you feel a little bit hopeless. But the Lord says, I have a plan. The Lord says, I am up to something that no one has seen before. I'm going to move in a way that's beyond natural. It is supernatural. So the Lord says, hold the line. Hold the line. It's time to advance. Hold the line of your personal relationship with God. Hold the line on your own peace, your own joy, your own faith, your own spiritual growth. You got to hold the line. You got to hold the line for justice. You got to hold the line for truth. You got to hold the line for righteousness in this land. I am telling you, God is saying, I want a people that are not rocked by the media. I want a people that are not rocked by what they see in the natural. The Lord says, I, I want a people that lean their ear to heaven and hear what heaven has to say. The Lord says, hold the line for the greatest revival and awakening the earth has ever seen is at hand. The Lord says, hold the line and do not back up, do not give up. The Lord says, continue to watch, continue to pray. The Lord says, yes, there's personal miracles for you, but I've got a big picture and I've got a big plan and I've got plenty of miracles to go around. Did you hear the song this morning? You're not going to run out of miracles anytime soon. Come on, there's plenty of miracles for us. There's plenty of miracles to release in the world. And there's plenty of miracles to change nations. So shake off your weariness. And shake off your disappointment. Shake off your grief. Shake off your fear right now. Tiffany prophesied about the fear today. Come on, get rid of the fear. Get rid of the intimidation. Come on, get rid of the stuff that wants to eat away at your soul. Get rid of the bitterness right now. Get rid of the stuff that wants to cause your faith to be weakened in this process. I'm telling you, God is looking for people that are not moved by what they see but that are moved by what heaven is decreeing and by what heaven is declaring. And I can tell you that even though it seems like a night season, as Pastor Greg gave us that message about the, the night season, he talked about the fact that we're coming into a new day. How many know that God's prophesied new day, new day, new day? How many know that in order to get into a new day, you got to go through a night? But God says, I own the night. Can we just shout and give him praise today? He owns the night. He owns the night. He owns the night. You can be seated. So I just want to issue that as a statement of where the Lord is taking us.